Brickhouse is preparing to leave the island of Zanzibar off the east coast of Africa and sail to the mainland. But a big snag has just developed, which is going to test every bit of our nautical skills and abilities as we move south along the African coast. Hello, we are Patrick and Rebecca Childress on the sailboat Brick House at Valiant 40. Right now we are in the very large, very historic island of Zanzibar off the east coast of Africa, Tanzania. We have been here for a month and now it's time to get ready and move on. We'll be heading off to Dar es Salaam, a large city on the mainland of Tanzania. One of the first things that we did when we arrived in Zanzibar was to test the dock water here at the marina. We always test water at a marina or we're from a city water faucet before we put it in our tank. We just want to know what we're dealing with. So we will test here for TDS, total dissolved solids. This water comes back at a surprising 57 parts per million. That is very low. Oftentimes city water that we have tested across the Indian Ocean has been 85, maybe 95 parts per million. Many yacht RO systems will produce RO water that has a TDS between 200 and 400 parts per million. So oftentimes city water is far cleaner than RO water from a sailboat. However, there is another test for microbes. This water test is made by the Hatch Company, H-A-C-H, -H, and it's called a patho screen. And so it tests for hydrogen sulfide producing bacteria, which includes most pathogens. So we take this little packet, we'll open that up. Inside of here is a gold powder. We'll open up the test tube, which I rinsed out extremely well with the water out of the dock faucet. And pour that in. Oops. Try to get most of it in. And what this powder does is oxygenate the water. And it encourages the microbes to grow. So we'll set this up for 24 hours and see the color change. Right now it's kind of a nice golden color and if there's microbes in there it'll turn black and that develops the hydrogen sulfide, rotten egg smell. Um, no color change, nothing that settles in the bottom, then we're good to go. There's no microbes growing in there. So the test did not change color. We're good to go. There are no microbes in this water. It turns out this is RO water. This brand new marina hotel complex has their own massive water making system. If there were microbes in the water, I would have followed the World Health Organization and put in one eighth of a cup of chlorine. That is sodium hypochlorite, 5.25% into 50 gallons of water. Iodine is also an effective treatment for microbes in fresh water. Too much chlorine in an aluminum tank can cause deterioration of the tank. However, our aluminum tanks are well painted on the inside. Oh, it's really nice to have this clear port on each of our water tanks, port and starboard, so we can visually see how full the tanks are and also see what's going on in those tanks, if there's any microbe growth or any other contaminants that we need to contend with. Being at a dock also gave us a chance to use the electricity and our little vacuum. I don't know why it keeps happening, but there's always been from day one a problem with rust in this stove. And so whenever we get a chance at a marina, I go in and wire brush everything, vacuum it out, clean it up really good. We don't have any more Corrosion X, which is a very good anti-corrosion compound. Once we got away from America, it just wasn't available throughout Southeast Asia and now the Indian Ocean area. So I'm using a spray in white lithium grease, which is somewhat helpful. And the next project is to take the plastic bags off of the prop in the shaft, which were put on here a month ago. And 
we'll see just how effective they have been to prevent growth on those parts of the crop deck. The yellow coloring is called Prop Speed. It's a silicone product which we applied about 14 months ago to the prop shaft and the prop itself and the strut. It's still doing very well on the stainless steel prop shaft and the stainless steel parts of the hub of the Kiwi prop. Originally, we had longer blades on here which were treated with prop speed and they were doing extremely well for anti marine growth. However, the longer blades were a failure as far as performance wise. They did okay in forward, but they try to move so much water in reverse and it's a fixed pitch in reverse that it would oftentimes just stall the engine. Or trying to back up against the wind, I couldn't get enough RPMs to be effective. So I had to go back and put on the shorter blades which work far better. The prop speed has been working for us and I think we'll be using it again the next time we haul out. So cleaning up the blades of the Kiwi prop will just take a little bit of scraping and then some sanding with 220 grit sandpaper. Up here on the front of the boat, first fairing block is for the Lorance fish finder and the paddle wheel for the knot meter. And the second fairing block is for the Raymarine down vision, the dual sonar. And then we have another little paddle wheel on the other side of the boat for a knot meter that goes through the Ray Marine instruments. This is the transducer for the Ray Marine depth sounders. Of course the whole bottom needs a scrubbing so hopefully we'll get that done in the cleaner, clearer water over in Dar es Salaam and maybe even hire some local help to uh, make short work of the whole project. So we motored out of the marina through anchored ships to begin the 40 mile trip southwest to the mainland. And as we went, we passed right by the great historic stone town. And we have such fond memories of that place, we have to share some of them with you.
We started out having a nice sail to the mainland and then the wind died and what little wind there was was on the nose. So we started motoring and we did a lot of motoring and as we motor after about every two to three hours I like to go into the engine room and check just to make sure that there's no leaks at any hose clamps. And I check the suction gauge for the Raycor filters to see if that's indicating any kind of a restriction inside of the Raycor filter. And since we're out here getting bounced around and the diesel fuel is getting shaken up, if there's any contaminants on the bottom, now they are suspended in the fuel. This is a good time then to switch tanks and start filtering the fuel from the other tank. And all was looking well until the wind picked up to 26 knots, 28 knots, 29 knots. And I saw the storm coming. I got the mainsail down just in time. I just let the halyard fly and let everything fall down as fast as it could. And then just did a roll and tuck on the mainsail onto the top of the boom. None of that flaking stuff back and forth. There wasn't enough time and we had everything secured and then just ran under a full jib in the 30 knots of wind. This boat sails very well under jib alone. A lot of boats sails very well with just a jib. If I wanted to roll up that Genoa in this 29, 30 knots of wind without it flogging itself to death, I would first set the stay sail and then head well off the wind. The stay sail will then blanket the wind to the Genoa and make it far easier to roll up. And then I'd continue on in our normal direction with just the stay sail. If I felt like I wanted to roll up the stay sail at all, then I would also head downwind as much as possible and roll it up. This is very localized weather, short duration, so with the full jib, I'll just sit tight and let the weather go on by. It was far too impromptu to take video of doing a roll and tuck on the mainsail and getting that lash down to the boom when all this bad weather just suddenly came up. So here we are in a nice calm anchorage and doing the same thing here just for the fun of it. I like the Tides Marine sail track. I can let the halyard fly and everything comes down at a good measured clip. If these were cars with roller bearings, there'd be such little friction, everything would come crashing down, sounding as though something has to break. I'll have a lot more to say about the Tides Marine sail track when we haul out in South Africa. And you can imagine though, bouncing around off of wave tops and the wind howling and blowing, it can be very difficult gathering up a sail and rolling it onto the boom. It's hard enough just in a nice calm anchorage. It is a far easier job if it is not a loose footed mane like this one is. Then it just rolls right into itself and into its own little pocket like a hammock. So much easier. Going through this process at sea, bouncing around off of wave tops, the main sheet has to be pulled very tight and then a preventer off to the side. The boom just cannot be slopping back and forth. It's hard enough just to keep oneself on a boat, let alone have a boom trying to knock you off. So the boom has to stay very steady during this whole process. One thing I should have done at the beginning of this demonstration was to pull tight on the outhaul to bring the foot of the sail as close to the boom as possible. And that would have made for a much nicer hammock for the rest of the sail to settle into. And I wouldn't have had that big drop off towards the back end of the sail. Also, it would have been a good help to have someone else like a crew like Rebecca to pull on both the number one and number two reef points. And that would also help to gather the sail tightly up to the boom and make for a quicker rolling furl of this mainsail. So I only used three sail ties here. Actually, when it was very windy and I rolled the sail up, I used four sail ties. And so four or five sail ties, I would say was the best way to go. And right here is where the fourth sail tie certainly would have been useful. So it may not look all that pretty, but in a terrible storm, when you have to work fast, pretty doesn't mean anything. It has to be effective.
It's good to drop anchor again in the big city, the place that we have gotten to know very well, and especially some of the local people. Like Roy, the procurement man, we will soon be putting in an order of 100 liters of diesel with him, and he'll just deliver it right out to the deck of our boat. And of course, we have to stop in and see Haji. Haji is the manager of the jetty and all of the moorings, and he takes very good care of us. And we'll carry on and say hello to Jason. Jason is from South Africa. He came here to Dar es Salaam to work on one person's boat over at the Yacht Club. He came in such demand, he never left. And now he's manager of the Hala facility and the rest of the marine facilities here. It's always fun to go in to talk to Jason and not only talk to him, but to sit in his very good air conditioning, which is certainly nice in this 95 degree heat outside. Here is our major problem. There is a tremendous storm between Madagascar and the coast of Africa, right in this restriction area. Here the currents run south along the African coast and north along the Madagascar coast. Any kind of a storm kicks up some hellacious seas and this is exactly where we need to go. If we wait too long to go this route, then the northeast winds, which we really need to get south, will turn to their seasonal southeast winds and put them right on the nose. So it's a very difficult passage up ahead. We have to play the weather exactly right, pay very close attention to what's happening and keep our fingers crossed. So because of the weather changing right now, we will have northeast winds for the next several days. We have to leave tomorrow and take advantage of that weather and then hold up somewhere along the route until we get more north winds to carry us on south and avoid any terrible storms like what is shown here. So we are scrambling to get into town to buy groceries and supplies, put on the diesel fuel Say goodbye to everybody and get out of here just as soon as we can. It doesn't matter if it's night or day, we are on our way. everyone please if you like the video um, please give us a thumbs up down below turn on the notification bell so you get a notification from YouTube when our next video comes out I want to thank a couple people Richard Dyer Mark Bowers and Melissa Williams thanks so much for seeking out that PayPal tip jar on our blog Patrick finally agreed to let me do that now the PayPal tip jar is at the top of our blog at www.whereisbrickhouse.com and I've also put it down below in the description. It wasn't easy to find, I'm sure. And uh, thanks for leaving your tips. You're the first three tippers and we really appreciate that. Also, the one person for the one sweatshirt that we've sold. Thank you to whoever that was that bought that sweatshirt. Thanks. Also, thank you for everybody that's uh, going to the Amazon and other affiliate links down below before you do your shopping. Within the next 24 hours after clicking on that link, help support Brickhouse. So thanks again, everybody that's doing that. It's really making a difference. I also have that link down below for Nautic Ed. Uh, Nautic Ed is one of the most respected online course uh, schools online so um, you know they give you two free courses up front they want to show you how good they are at this and how much you can learn online um, so definitely worth taking them up on the offer of two free courses that link is down below in the description everything from anchoring tips to uh, how to handle your boat at the dock with wind blowing in different directions than the current to marine electronics to interpreting the weather forecast uh, there's a little bit of everything in there, a lot of everything in there, so check it out. Also, both of us are sort of wondering, I like Patrick's earlier videos, but do you like the older ones? 
or do you like the newer ones? He sort of likes the newer ones because they're more technically better edited and he's learning more and more how to do that every day so he's more and more happy with the videos that he puts out. Which ones have you liked the most? Which ones specifically have you liked the most? Have you liked you know the, the DIY alarm system that he put together or do you like the provisioning and galley or maybe the uh, Sailing Across the Indian Ocean series or maybe just the Can You Survive on a De Deserted Island uh, series. Uh, which, which one did you like the best? And do you like it when we put extra little glimpses of where we are and where we've been to kind of let you know what we're doing? Or do you think we should just stick to sailing tips and tricks and how to fix the boat and leave the land alone? Let us know what you think down below in the comments, okay? And most of all, stick around for when we get down to South Africa. Again, in maybe two, three, four weeks, not sure. I just hope we get there.